Hello, welcome to the Lone Show. I'm your host, John Milone. In this episode, we don't have on regulars because they're busy doing the space talking about uh, police yours, some old guy, uh, crypto, and whatever stuff. As for our guest, he's from Hampton Roads, Virginia, located in his home office. He's a real estate agent transitioning into a mentor and speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Robert Thompson. How are you doing today? Fabulous. Good, good. So, how's life? Oh, life is not too bad. Life is not too bad. Um, been busy this morning, a little tired today, quite honestly, and uh, just, uh, you know, running along, doing what we need to be doing. <laughs> All right, then. Okay, cool. And have you been up to much recently? Been quite busy, actually. Um, in terms of real estate, everything is good there. Moving forward on several different properties, working on some new things. Uh, in terms of the mentoring and coaching, uh, working on the ebook, working on some podcasts that are going to be coming up soon, uh, webinars and things of that nature. So really just trying to get into the creative headspace as much as possible. Okay, sounds interesting. And what was uh, what came a point when you felt like you want to get into real estate? Honestly, I was a chemist for nine years. I worked at a chemical plant until, and at about 33, 32, something like that, I started to look into real estate because I realized that I was going to be a chemist as of right then and there. I was going to be a chemist the rest of my life. I had been there a long time, 12-hour night shifts, wasn't really going to make any more money. I was kind of capped at where I was and just it's realized that it just wasn't what I wanted to do. So I started looking into real estate and I got lucky. I, I To this day, I describe it that way. I found something that I'm very passionate about that I absolutely enjoy doing and love to do. And I eventually transitioned into real estate full time at age 35 in the recession of 2007 and doubled my income in 2008 and just never really looked back and, and don't regret that transition in any way, shape or form. Okay, great. And in terms of mentoring and speaking, is it more on the real estate kind of things or do you speak about other, about other things? <laughs> It started out on the real estate end of things. And to be quite honest, I can be, um, I would say, very opinionated in how I think real estate needs to be done. I come from a position of honesty and I don't sugarcoat. And I think that's what makes me a good real estate agent. I'm also not everybody's cup of tea. And I think for me, that transition has been happening because folks had started reaching out to me and just asking questions about maybe, let's say, a real estate podcast and, and, made the comment that, you know, I like your thought process. I, I like how you're thinking. I think the other thing is that young people today don't, aren't as good at interacting with other people as we were growing up. And again, I'm 50 years old. So I remember pre-internet and pre all of that. And I think it's a wonderful time to be young because you can find your tribe online. You can try many different things and nobody really even has to know as opposed to, Myself growing up in a somewhat of a small town, your tribe was whoever you were there with locally, and there's nothing you could do about it. You you just couldn't just get up and, and move for the most part. And now you can you can find your people all across the world and all across the country. But I find too many young people are afraid to reach out and say hello and don't necessarily know how to interact, you know, if it's not through a cell phone screen, unfortunately. Okay, I can see that. So, if you were given 500 acres of land, what would you use that land for? Quite honestly, I, I would uh, build myself a place on part of it and for my friends and family, and I would probably grow food and things of that nature. And I don't know if I necessarily would ever leave, quite honestly. <laughs> oh, okay. That's cool. I would do everything online. <laughs> All right, sweet. Would you rather have extra fingers or extra toes? Extra fingers, definitely. Oh, yeah. 
I mean, that would just be weird to have a bunch of extra toes. I mean, I'm sure it happens, but uh, no, I'm going to pass on that. Okay. I understand. What was life for you growing up? Life was good. I have been blessed. Uh, I would say I had a typical suburban childhood. I was very close to my mother. My mother passed in 2009. I'm still very close to my father. My father's kind of the last of... I would say the the last of the Vietnam era. So he grew up a little bit differently. Discipline was strong. Not that he ever smacked us around or anything, but we knew, you know, you get your chores done, you get them done. There wasn't a, there was no back talk in my house. It didn't happen. I quite honestly was the genius child until I was about 15 or 16. I was always in advanced classes. I was very short. I was wore glasses. I was the the epitome of a 1980s nerd. That was my that's just the way I looked. And somewhere between my 15th or 16th year, you know, as of my father describes it, I kind of lost my mind and just decided that I didn't want to be the nerd kid anymore and started, you know, hanging out with a rougher crowd and, you know, starting to party a bit and just kind of completely almost did a complete 180 at one point. Hmm. Okay, then. And this is this is a question that just came from the top of my head. Have okay. You ever, so, have you ever thought about a service where you can use Wi-Fi literally wherever you go, no matter how remote the location is? Yes, and I think it would be wonderful. I would imagine we'll eventually get that way, but I think it's a great idea across the board, without a doubt. Yes, I agree. It's also a very good idea. There was a there was a company, and I don't think they do it anymore. Probably ten years ago, there was a company that was making wind up laptops to where you would charge them and crank them by hand, and they were dispersing them to third world countries. And I think, quite honestly, the technology kind of came and went very quickly, and they ended up with better ideas along the way. And I remember that was part of what they were trying to do was a very minimum wi-fi but at the same time just have some sort of some sort of computer access available to folks that typically you know had never even seen a computer before and i think that's important too yeah absolutely it's a it's it's the great equalizer it really it's amazing you know i i guess i'm blessed in some respects to where I remember a time before that where you had to go to the library to get all of your knowledge or, you know, encyclopedias and things of that nature. You know, the, the traditional, we got to go play outside. And now we have all of these, you know, bells and whistles, you know, at our, at our touch, you know, in a minute. Absolutely. What is your favorite season? My favorite season is definitely fall. It reminds me of, Kicking back, you know, playing football, watching football, and I mean American football, of course, um, soccer too, uh, you know, drinking a cold beer and just relaxing and having a good time. That's To me, that's like the perfect weather. Yeah, I agree. Fall is the grace, one of the best seasons there is. The leaves falling and the temperatures cooling down from, the, you know, very hot temperatures. Oh yes, definitely. And I and I live my part of Virginia, we do get all four seasons, so it's it's nice to have that availability. Yeah, sure is. What would you change about your life if you could? If I could change anything about my life, I don't necessarily think that I would have lost my ever loving mind at 15 and 16 and decided to you know, essentially not do well in school. There's a lot of people that were able to do both. They were able to have fun and party and still make good grades. And I, for whatever reason, was unable to do that. Like I just completely gave up with school, didn't want to deal with it. I mean, I graduated, but it was really only because I had enough credits from my earlier years. I had been in advanced classes. So I would say I did not need to take such a drastic turn. Now, luckily, I never got into drugs or anything. It was more basic suburban 
you know, mischief and fighting and drinking and stuff like that. So it was never certainly, I was never a juvenile delinquent, but it would have been nice to be able to do both. And I could never seem to pull that off, at least at the time. Hmm. Okay. I can see that. What could you give a 40 minute presentation on without any preparation whatsoever? My presentation would be on persistent progress and you can make a change at any age, whether it's 50, 35, 30. We have a lot of negativity that goes on in this world. And that's one thing that I always focus on, that there's always going to be people that tell you that you can't. And it drives me up the wall. And it could be when I left the grocery business to go work for the chemical plant, I had guys at the grocery store that were like, this is the best job you're ever going to have. We're going to make you grocery manager, blah, blah, blah. When I left the chemical plant, I had the same type of person. Why would you go real estate full time in the middle of a recession? This is the best job you're ever going to have, you know, blah, blah, blah. At the end of the day, you've got to make your mark and you've got to do what you need to do. And there's always going to be negative people and you just got to tune it out. And there's multiple ways to do that. It's not easy, but it has to be done. Okay. Yeah. What caused you to feel nostalgic recently? Wow. Um, I joined a, I joined another group on Facebook and it's a old comic book group. And I was a fan of comic books, you know, in the seventies and eighties. So that's got me thinking about some of the old comics that I used to read and that, you know, people will post different, you know, photos of comic books that I remember growing up with. And it always, it kind of makes me nostalgic. Fabulous. If you could travel to any place in the world, where would it be? You mean like modern day or back in the day? Anytime, anywhere. Anytime, anywhere. I would say for me, it would have to be probably, you know, beginning of our country or of, of America, Continental Congress type of time frame, just to kind of see what was going on in those guys' heads at the time. Uh-huh. Very good. I love it. What is the stupidest joke you've ever heard? <laughs> The stupidest joke I have ever heard. Okay. Um, a priest and a rabbi walk into a bar, which is kind of stupid because you figure if the priest walked into it, the rabbi would have seen it. Oh. Oh, yeah, that does. That's pretty stupid. Yeah, it is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it, it speaks for itself, really. Yeah, it does. Yeah. What is your favorite holiday tradition? My favorite holiday tradition would have been, and we don't do it anymore because we realistically we can't, would have been Christmas Eve. My mother used to do the night before Christmas. You know, she would, you know, t you know, basically, you know, do it word for word the night before Christmas. And I would act it out in front of the chimney. And I would, you know, be very theatrical about it and be silly and stupid about it. And they would always make the family laugh every year. And then when the little ones were around, we did it then also, you know, pretty much up until my mother passed away, we would go over to my mother's and do it anyway, or it got done regardless. Even as a grown up, I did it. And obviously that tradition stopped, you know, when my mother passed away. Mm. Yeah, I can see that. What is the one thing you can't live without? The one thing I can't live without. Watching MASH. I am a MASH fanatic. I watch it just about every day. I'm on two or three different MASH Facebook groups. Without a doubt, I, it's MASH. I don't know why. It's just something about it. And I watch it all the time. Ah, okay. I can see that. If someone wrote a book about you, what do you think its title would be? I would say it would be called All Over the Place, or he did it his way, because again, I've changed directions and jobs several times. I have a tendency to 
do what I want when I want to do it. And I've always been known for, again, right, wrong, or otherwise, my blunt honesty when it comes to work and things of that nature. It just, it's kind of who I am and it fits. And kind of what you see is what you get. I'm not a suit and tie guy. I've been in million dollar properties and sold million dollar properties, but you're not getting me in a suit and tie. It's not going to happen. You're getting jeans and a polo shirt. I just, I am, I'm going to be who I'm going to be and, you know, damn the consequences. All right. Fabulous. What habit do you find yourself doing without thinking? What do I find myself doing without thinking? Um, probably thinking about what I'm going to eat. <laughs> um, what music music I'm in the mood to. I'm a big, big music fan. So I would say it kind of goes along that to where I can very quickly go from ZZ Top to switch it over to Wu-Tang Clan or something like that. You just I'm all over the place with the music. So a lot of times if I'm listening to something in the back of my head, I kind of have a I'll start thinking of a general direction that I want to go. Hmm. Okay. If you could turn any activity into an Olympic sport, what would you have a good chance of winning a medal for? Any athletic activity that any that I could win a sport. You say any athletic activity or any activity? Any activity. I would say would have to be trivia would be my thing. I know a lot of useless knowledge and I am a the king of 80s pop culture. Ah. Very good. Very good. If your mind was an island, what would it look like? I would say it would be very, very large, and there would be lots of little hidden pockets all the way across it. Oh, I love it. <laughs> what is the best way to start the morning? Honestly, I, I think, like, unfortunately, like a lot of people... For me, it's I wake up fairly early and I'll probably spend 20 minutes laying in bed, goofing off on the phone, checking my usual sites in the morning and then checking email, Facebook, and then I'll get out of bed, take my meds and start my day. OK, sounds fabulous. I, guess. <laughs> I would love to tell you that it's some sort of athletic, athletic activity or exercise or reading a book or whatever, but I would be lying. <laughs> Fair enough. What kind of music do you often listen to? I'm all over the board. I listen to everything. You Everything from heavy metal, hard rock, to uh, rap, country, everything in between. I don't really... I think the biggest thing for me is it's got to be upbeat and it's got to be uplifting. I'm not really into sad, woe is me, nobody loves me music. That doesn't do it for me. I like upbeat stuff. I like positive stuff. Something that's going to get me pumped up. Yep, yeah, I agree. I let music it pumps me up too. Yeah. What would a world populated by clones of you be like? There, <laughs> there'd be a lot more stubbornness than there already is. But hopefully, I believe there's always room for compromise. That's how that's how I think, and I think the world would be better off with more compromise. And there's room to compromise. And still have strong opinions. Yeah. I can I think so. see that. Yeah. I, I just do. I, I think most of the time, you know, I, I think it's kind of like an 80-20 rule to where I think 80% of the population basically agrees on most things were within reason. And then you kind of have 10% of the loonies on both sides that are louder than everybody else. And that's part of the problem. And I think the media feeds into that because let's be honest, that makes excitement and that's what people want to hear and see unfortunately yeah i'm afraid so what improved your life quality so much you wished you did it sooner i had uh the eye surgery the lasik eye surgery probably six years ago and i was blind for most of my life you know very bad vision and always wore glasses and contacts and I got the eye surgery. Best thing I ever did. Wish I had done it years before. Hmm. All right. Good for you. 
where do you see yourself 20 years from now? You figure I'm 50, 20 years from now, I think I'd like to be winding down. I enjoy working. I think I would like to be in a, and I'll be completely honest, and this might be a little overblown, and I don't think it's going to happen, but I would like to be in almost like a Les Brown sort of position, a Tony Robbins sort of position to where I've got something important to say, and it's not so much about money as it is getting, you know, helping people and doing things. I think sometimes some of those guys um, lean more towards the, okay, take my course and pay me a bunch of money, blah, blah, blah. And then you kind of have the folks that are a bit more into it because it's important to them. And it's not so much about the dollar. And I think that's the direction that I would like to go and kind of be that positive mentor slash role model slash whatever you want to call it. And by the time I hit 70, you know, I would imagine I would be winding it down at that point. Okay, then. If you had to bury a treasure chest, where would you hide it? If I had my choice, I would probably bury it in my old backyard growing up, the quote unquote family home. That's where I would probably put it. But obviously it's fenced and I don't know the people that live there. So that might be a little difficult to pull off. But I realistically, that's exactly where it would go because I spent, you know, we moved there. I spent well over 20 years living in that house. So that is the, you know, was the quote unquote family home growing up. I can say that. What's something you tried really hard to like, but you just couldn't? Honestly, I never once got into Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter. And I went back and I, and I read the Lord of the Rings when I was young. And I was a ferocious reader and loved to read. Could not get into the Lord of the Ring books then. Couldn't get into them now. And then have no interest whatsoever in the Harry Potter stuff at all. Oh, okay. I understand. Would you ever try space tourism? Yeah, I think so, but I, I'd like to think I've got better things to spend my money on. And I guess maybe if I bought everything else, then <laughs> that's what I would, you know, then I would spend some money on that. But it's, I wouldn't say it's high on my list. Yeah, I agree. Besides, it's, it's currently in the infancy of its progress, so uh, there's not much to explore at the moment. No. Do you have any routines you try to do every day? Routines every day is probably just normal business stuff, unfortunately, reaching out to past clients, trying to get some amount of exercise in. I typically will take stock of the year, you know, at the end of every year. That's kind of a big one for me. But that's really about it. I, I'd hate to say that I, I am I, I'm typically not super routine based. And quite honestly, it depends on what's going on that day. It's like today. You know, I had uh, your podcast. I had another one earlier, and then I've got some meetings later. I've got some creative stuff I've got to get turned in. Tomorrow, I've got a bunch of real estate stuff going on, so it just depends. You know, my my schedule can be a little bit all over the place sometimes. The only thing would be routine is pretty much every Thursday night, uh, some friends of mine uh, will get together just about every Thursday night and have a couple of drinks and talk about the week and just kind of do the catch-up thing. Okay, sounds good. What stats for your life would you like to see? I'm sorry, say that again? What stats for your life would you like to see? Well, the fact that I, I hopefully live a long time, I've got some health issues, but I would like to be on this earth for, for, very much, for much longer. Um. My father is 80, and I'll be honest, I would love to get another 15 or 20 years from him as long as he's somewhat healthy. My father is quite healthy for being 80 year old and has all his faculties, and I would love for that to continue. Um, other than that, that's really about it. I, I would like to try to continue to do what I do with my real estate and my other stuff, and, and at the end of the day, be happy. That's great. How did you spend your last birthday? I actually, we were at a little local bar and my friends out were out there and, and we celebrated my 50th birthday. So they had like balloons and, you know, things of that nature going on. And, 
and I think they had some cupcakes and stuff like that. So it was fun. Okay, that's cool. Nothing too crazy. All right, fair enough. If you could travel back in time, what decade would you want to live in? Wow. Um, unfortunately, I mean, the fact of the matter is the decade that life has gotten better and better and easier and easier. So I would have to say probably the 70s or the 80s simply because, you know, you've got all this crazy good stuff coming your way. And to be at the start of some of that stuff would be pretty cool because I was again, I, I was in the infancy of the personal home computers and all of that and had access to that stuff. But by the time I got into it, I kind of flipped the script and went the other direction. And if I hadn't, you know, maybe I could have, you know, got into the programming stuff very early on or something like that. Who can say? Okay. Cool. Cool. Would you rather be really hot or really cold? Really hot. Yes, I agree. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Would you rather be able to breathe underwater or have the agility of a cat? Oh, give me the agility of the ca- of a cat all day long. That's a no-brainer. Oh, yes. Many advantages from there. <laughs> That's for sure. Oh, yeah. What has been the most interesting news story you've seen recently? The most, in- the in- most interesting news story that I've seen lately... I got to be honest with you, none of it has, there hasn't been a whole lot that's been it, but super interesting. You know, we're kind of in this period of obviously, of course, here in America, we're getting shootings all the time. You almost get numb to it to a certain extent. Then you've had all of the, the excitement over the coronation and all that. So there really hasn't been anything, you know, that, that stands out as far as I'm concerned. At least not right. At least as of right now. Yeah, it's quite sad, really. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it is. It is, and I have a tendency to kind of be focused on my my own circle of people. My attitude is always that's what I can control or that's what I can help and prevent. So, as long as my people are taken care of and they're okay, that's all I can really do. And at the end of the day, the other stuff, you know, nobody's really asking my, me my opinion. You know, CNN's not calling up Bob Thompson and asking him what he thinks and how to solve the world's problems. So I would rather not invest the emotional capital in stuff that I can't control. Yeah, I I absolutely agree. If you could create your own job title, what would it be? Just Bob. I'm good with that. Yep. You sure that's, all I, that's all I need. Just just call me Bob. What, you know. Lord knows I've been called worse. I know my my real estate stuff has always been Bob the agent because when I became a real estate agent, I originally was going to do like BobThompson.com. And of course, that was already taken, obviously. And I had an agent friend of mine that used to call me, remember when Bob the Builder was popular, she used to call me Bob the agent. And it just kind of stuck. And I'm glad it did. And that became like my website and Facebook is all Bob the agent. I just kind of ran with it. So I like that and it fits and it works. Um, and most of my real estate stuff online is kind of a mix of real estate and a mix of, you know, silliness and fun. I, you know, I always try to, I do way more, I try to do way more personal stuff than I do, you know, rates are great and come buy a home and blah, blah, blah. I'm not, that's not really my, my thing. So I, I think just Bob or some version of that is fine with me. All right. Very good. What is your favorite ice cream topping? My favorite ice cream topping is wet walnuts, without a doubt. Oh, interesting. Like the syrupy Walmart walnuts that they put on ice cream. Excellent. That all day, every day. Great. And that is all we have for this episode. It's great having you here, Bob, talking about you work as a real estate agent. And then... You work as a mentor and speaker and your life story and everything else. It's been fabulous. Awesome. I had a blast. I appreciate it. Anytime. And until next time, stay tuned for more.